Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of The Incredible Adventures of Clark. You know, when you're preparing for a trip in a motorhome, especially one as large as Clark, you just can't hop in and go on a whim. Although that sounds fun, it's completely impractical and, uh, frankly, not very safe. So I'm not only responsible for everybody that's in Clark, I'm responsible for everybody that's around Clark when I'm on the highway. So it's really important that this 22-state trip is going to involve a lot of planning, planning that I've already done for months. It's going to be 6,139 miles on the road. That's 94 hours and 12 minutes of driving. That's 29 stops. Uh, 13 of those stops, by the way, are going to be for fuel. And this particular trip is going to consume roughly 755 gallons of diesel fuel. So let's uh, think about that. An average cost of uh, $5.50 across the country right now. Well, you do the math. It uh, completely makes my head hurt and my wallet cry. So let's just talk a little bit about Clark and uh, then we'll talk about planning because that's kind of important. So Clark is made by the Renegade RV Group out of Bristol, Indiana. They're very good at making these big super C categories of RVs. And in those categories, there's a class A. They look like the buses. Class B, they're a lot smaller and normally around 20, 24 feet. Class C, uh, and then this is a super class C. So Clark is considered a, a, a super C. And uh, these were originally designed for people that are primarily in the racing circuit. You know, they're driving around towing their big race cars or their speed boats, and they have these big trailers behind them that they have all their tools and everything they need. So they need a beefy, powerful truck to pull these big, heavy trailers, which is what created the Super C category. So uh, just to give you a little, some specs on uh, Clark, he's built on a Freightliner chassis, the S2 RV chassis. That's 33,000 pounds dry. But when you got lots of fluids and everything in it, it's 46,000 pounds. Clark has a 12,000 uh, pound towing capacity. So just to tell you how heavy that is, my Chevy Suburban's about 6,000 pounds. We can pull two of them. Not that I would suggest it to anybody, because that puts you about 90 feet long on the road. Most highways max out at about 70 feet, so I don't recommend that. I currently do not tow anything. We usually use Uber or rental cars where we go to our final destination. The engine here uh, in Clark, 360 horsepower Cummins diesel engine with 800 foot-pounds of torque with an Allison six-speed automatic transition transmission excuse me that's sort of like the uh the best in class for uh, these big trucks now clark has a 100 gallon diesel fuel tank and is about 12 foot 10 feet high in the air right to my uh air conditioners uh the length of clark is about 39 feet as i said fuel capacity uh 100 gallons uh, a fuel that it, it, it requires, and it has a DEF tank, 10 gallons DEF tank. It's a small blue one over here. Uh, DEF, by the way, was required in 2010 by the EPA to help engines reduce their production of nitrogen oxides. Uh, good for the environment, so uh, they don't smell like the old diesels did. Freshwater capacity is 150 gallons of water. Gray water capacity, that's the soapy water from the shower, 75 gallons. Black water is, that's 75 gallons. That's a lot of, you know. You know. Uh, and then it has a 10-gallon uh, uh, propane tank on board. It has a, a generator on board, a uh, diesel generator. Uh, it's an Onan diesel generator. We have a... Uh, uh, to charge the house batteries. We have solar power. Uh, and basically, Clark is 50 amp electrical panel, or 12 volts. So uh, he's beefy. He's got uh, a lot in here for living, big systems and tanks. Uh, so you can live off the grid uh, for quite a while. So first of all, all my stops and stays are pre-planned and mapped out using a program called RV life trip wizard from rvlife.com and uh, i really like this program um, i input all of my specs on on clark so one 
So I, I input it one time up front, uh, like Clark's height, Clark's width, how much propane uh, he's carrying. Uh, and I use that uh, to essentially plan uh, routes that uh, won't create problems for me and Clark. And uh, you can imagine what those problems could be, like an overpass that I cannot fit under, like this one. We don't want that, right? That would be bad. So also my entire trip is then duplicated in my Garmin GPS, which I have on board. We'll show you more of that while we're on the road. Uh, that's an RV version of the software, and it also enables me to input my dimensions uh, into that to uh, ensure, it's a secondary uh, safety measure, to ensure that I'm never on a road with low clearance or crazy turns or no guardrails, you know, those types of things. Now, my backup to both of those systems for safety is, uh, and these are amazing technologies, but I go old-fashioned. I have a trucker's atlas on board. And this shows me all the truck routes throughout the country, uh, which I use as a triple check to ensure that I'm not on uh, any uh, routes inadvertently that the technology may have missed. Uh, and I also use it in case there's a major detour and my GPS warns me that there's an hour and a half delay ahead. Uh, it may route me differently, but before I choose to take that alternate route, I may pull over, check the Atlas and make sure everything's good. So, important lesson here that every stop is pre-planned and every route is mapped. Every gas station is pre-planned along the way. My program allows me to program in fuel warnings. When I get the 25 gallons, show me an alert so I know where to, to plan a fuel stop. This is important because if you do not want to be on a long stretch of road when you're running low on fuel and there's no stations for miles, okay? So it also makes sure that my tank has plenty of gas when I pull into a stop for the night uh, in the event that I need to get out of town quickly due to a weather emergency conditions or uh, any type of problem. You know, since I go into a stop and I have a full tank of gas, I know that I can get out of there quickly and that's morning, just get on the road. The other issue is that if I'm staying somewhere overnight where I'm not hooked up to shore electrical power, this is called boondocking. We'll talk about boondocking a bit. Uh, something that is important because your diesel generator will not run uh, and you may need your diesel generator if your batteries are low. It won't run if you're below a quarter of a tank of uh, fuel on board, okay, because it all works off the main diesel tank. So it's another reason to keep yourself gassed up. So every one of these stops is planned. Uh, now, before I go, I'm also checking my systems. I'm checking, you know, the tire pressure. I'm checking oil checking all the systems on the outside, I'm checking all these systems on the inside, and I do regular checks. I have uh, a checklist when I pull in uh, to a destination, to a camp. I have checklists for when I'm pulling out to make sure everything's closed. We'll talk more about that later. But these are all extensive and important. So uh, when you're doing all these checks, uh, both inside and outside, it's all about safety. And I can't stress enough about safety standards and best practices. There are many in my arsenal that are all part of my standard processes and procedures to ensure that everybody with me, everybody around me is safe and we're not finding ourselves in very unpredictable uh, circumstances. Recently, we produced a piece about quality standards in CBD and cannabis industry and how important it is to know that the brands you are using are observing standards, particularly GMP good manufacturing practice standards and other third-party certifications like ISO. These are really important, and companies that earn these certifications, like GMP, must submit to an audit uh, of things uh, that have all to do with that quality manufacturing. So testing of raw materials, for example, testing processes, facilities, equipment, personnel, confirmations of standard operating procedures, testing of the effectiveness of the products that, uh, uh, you know, and these are all important things to ensure safety and quality. So would you want to know if these companies actually do this or not? Well, this is what Credible validates and verifies to ensure that these companies actually went through those processes as opposed to just telling you you did. So Credible uh, is validating and verifying legalized cannabis, CBD, and health claims and making sure that these regulatory and certifying organizations that are working real hard to ensure safety, to create trustworthy brands, these, that these companies are actually following these standards. So while we're not a compliance enforcement initiative or regulatory body, 
we're very proud to support, support and promote the work that these, these organizations do by validating and verifying the claims and licenses and registrations and other documentation. So in doing so, we also support companies that are committed to ensuring the quality, safety, and effectiveness of their products uh, and helping them to distinguish themselves from those companies of low quality that aren't following them. And it's really important that being committed to quality and extending the extra resources to become certified and ensure best practices in safety and quality is followed and that consumers and buyers are aware of it. Because it's simply not fair or is it safe for a company to misrepresent any of these certifications. And any company that is Q-verified means that all of its badging and certifications have been vetted and verified, so it's true. And our mission is to facilitate and foster safer commerce that will result in increased trust in the entire industry. So Credible is the only digital registry of verified and validated legalized cannabis hemp and CBD brand. So if you want to be in Credible, get started today. Visit us at www.credible.com. So you'd be real happy if uh, I was following these standards, which I do. As a passenger, you want to make sure I'm following the standards uh, so that you're staying safe. And I'm not just talking about doing these things with this 40,000-pound monster uh, and, or, and winging it for the next uh, you know, month in 22 states. So um, you know, I'm not going to say, well, if we run out of gas, don't worry about it. If we hit a low overpass, eh, no worries about it. That wouldn't make you feel too safe. So nor should you feel safe uh, with companies that are just telling you that they're doing things and they're really not. So Credible is important. Get Incredible if you're a user or buyer. We're gonna be releasing this to consumers next year uh, in the beginning of the first quarter so that you'll be able to check your, your brands. Uh, but right now we're working hard in getting all the manufacturers and all the distributors all set up and validated and verified. Uh, and right now we've got over 40,000 licensed companies uh, in the platform. It's just a matter of getting them all registered and, and moving forward. So check us out at www.credible.com. Follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, you can go to our site and get all those links. And by all means, continue to follow me on The Incredible Adventures of Clark as we get ready to take off on Monday. That's Halloween. For now, I got to get back to the preparations. We got lots to stock up on and make sure we're ready to roll for Monday. So enjoy the weekend, everybody. Take care.